So if you have kids, it's inevitable they're gonna come up to you and say something like, Daddy, why is there rock and roll? And you're gonna say to them, rock and roll comes from Faraday's effect of electromagnetic induction. And it's like this. It's like if you have a hunk of metal, and this is really just gonna help us transfer flux from one place to another, and, uh, oh, we should label this. It's not just any metal, but let's say that it's a ferrous metal. It's got to be magnetizable, but we probably don't want it to be very magnetizable. It's just gonna be a little bit magnetizable. And I'm gonna put a switch in the circuit here and have the circuit go through battery. And then I'm gonna have the circuit go through a resistor just to show the fact that every circuit has a resistor. That's fine. And then I'm gonna have it go whoop in front and then back around and 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 then it will be leaving to that switch right there. You get the idea here? It is looping around that piece of metal. And then I gotta have this other one. And this other one's gonna be doing the same thing. Let's go with a different color. <clears throat> Why the heck not, right? So there's another coil here. It goes in front and then back around in front and back around, in front and back around. Let's not bicker about number of times around or anything like that yet. And all I'm gonna put over here is a voltmeter. It's probably gonna be a really sensitive voltmeter, probably a galvanometer. But uh, in this case, we got the same number of coils. N is equal to four here. And what I want you to believe is that if I create a magnetic field inside of this coil by flipping that switch, close the switch, the battery makes a current go this direction, which makes a magnetic field, well, let's figure it out. It's going that way. It makes a magnetic field pointing this direction inside the coil. But inside this coil, inside this solenoid, there's metal, and the metal then magnetizes, which tends to magnetize a little bit more of the metal, and a little bit more of the metal, and a little bit more of the metal. So in general, this whole piece of metal will become an electromagnet during the time that the current is flowing. So if I do close the switch, it will magnetize the piece of metal, and this will be the North Pole, and that will be the South Pole. Let's see if we can label that sucker right there. North Pole, South Pole, and then the beautiful thing is, here's the most beautiful thing, since the magnetic field inside of this coil changed. The coil induces a voltage, and that voltage can be read off by this voltmeter right here. That is Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. And Michael Faraday is one of the, he's one of the, uh, ooh, we'll go Spanish flavor. Um, He's one of the physicists who sought symmetry because he knew that a uh, current could make a magnetic field. He was wondering if a magnetic field could make a current, and he found that most definitely it could. There will be a steady current through this voltmeter if it's, well, we want to put a resistor there. Let's, let's put a resistor in here. There will be a steady current through that resistor if we have, wait a second, is that right? No, there will be a temporary current through that resistor if we create a steady current through this resistor. Woo, interesting. So there's something more complicated going on here. We need to go a little bit further. Let's define magnetic flux first. Oh, uh, we'll probably see that, uh, what, uh, what am I talking about? Les Paul and his electric guitar that he invented um, were, I think, at the very basis of the ability to make rock and roll, and Les Paul sort of made that awesome, and Jimi Hendrix brought it to fruition. So what I want to do next is define flux. This is magnetic flux. Looks like, like electric flux, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. So this is the Greek letter phi with capital, and so phi is related to flux because it's flowing something or other. But flux is just field dotted into area. It's the field that goes through a particular loop. So it's just going to be B times A times cosine of the angle between. But the angle between, oh, I need to get my loop. Hang on, right here. You need to remember 
that a loop's direction is outward for the loop. That loop right there has a, well, it has a direction. The surface itself has a direction that is out from it. How do you tell out from in? Very carefully. You probably are not going to be able to tell unless you know which direction the current is going. So we're gonna define direction in a little bit, but we're saying that this is the definition of flux, and it has a dot product, which is also called the scalar product. Because it does not give a vector. Notice that flux is not a vector. It's simply a quantity, and it has units. I would say that the units of flux, well, the units of flux have to be the unit of magnetic field, so that's Tesla, and then the units of area is meter squared. Tesla per meter squared is called a Weber, or WB. That's kind of cool for Webster, all right. But uh, <clears throat> here's my point. Magnetic flux as defined is not particularly interesting, but I need to give you Faraday's law of magnetic induction. And Faraday's law of magnetic induction says that an induced voltage, an induced voltage is caused by a change in magnetic flux. If magnetic flux changes, then you're going to get an effort on the part of the coil that's experiencing the flux changing. Like, here's the idea. The idea is, if I've got no magnetic field going through here, and then I turn on a magnetic field through here, then the, the loop's not gonna like that, and it's going to get a voltage that will try to oppose that. And I'll go into a little bit more detail about uh, this minus sign right here, but the minus sign says nature hates change. Let's just define that a little very carefully here. All right, the next, th this is actually my favorite part of this entire law, but the next part says that if you've got more loops, then you get a greater induced voltage. I think that sort of makes sense. A single loop doesn't have a lot of induced voltage, but if you get a heck of a solenoid, then you have a great induced voltage. And we also want to say that this is change in flux over change in time. And let's quit screwing around. I mean, you could go all formal on this. You could say negative N times flux final minus flux initial divided by T final minus T initial. Oh, we're using knots in this here, sorry. All right, you could do that, but let's be honest and just say that we're actually talking about the derivative. It will actually be negative N times D phi DT. As flux changes, a voltage is induced, and a lot of books like to put this as the EMF, but you know that I hate that. I don't like that. It's just a silly notation thing. An induced voltage occurs, and the faster flux changes, the greater the induced voltage is. That's awesome. 